Hi, my name's Keith. In this video, I will be repairing two ARP Odyssey synthesizers. The ARP Odyssey was manufactured between 1972 and 1981, and for its time was a fairly full-featured synth. There are two envelope generators, two oscillators, a uh, sample and hold, a filter, ring mod, uh, and the modulation matrix, which parts of the synth you can patch to other parts, is quite extensive. The ARP Odyssey went through three major design changes in its manufacturing history. Both of these machines are from the very first version of the Odyssey, also known as Mark I's, even though they look different. The white one was manufactured in 1972, and the black one was manufactured in 1974, just before they switched over to the Mark II, which used the black case. So the last generation of the Mark I's used this black case. Uh, one thing that's not very good about the earliest ARP Odysseys is the pitch bend is a simple knob, so it's very difficult to control. The Moog pitch bend wheels were a much better design idea. There are some problems with these synths that are apparent immediately. Um, the first thing is on the white one, when you push the keyboard, everything's sticky, and sometimes the keys even stay down, you have to lift them up. So I can tell that there's problems with the uh, keyboard bushings. They probably, the rubber grommets have probably all turned to goo. The black one, on the other hand, has a slightly different problem, and that's the rubber bushings have cracked, and you can hear this metal-on-metal metal contact. Another thing is a lot of the faders, or the, the sliders as some people call them, are really stiff, and they're just, you can tell they're full of goo and dirt, and those are going to have to get cleaned. And also some of the switches don't actually move very well. Uh, another problem with the white one, and I have not turned it on yet, is a lot of the mechanical components are missing. Like practically all the screws are missing. There are like loose wires everywhere. There's like the wiring is all over the place. The jumper board has fallen off and it's damaged. And I can also tell that the power supply is about to fail because the capacitors are kind of leaking a goo. The black one on the other hand I can turn on and it will make noise. But as you can tell it's like totally whacked out. You can't make a constant pitch. Everything's out of alignment so it has a lot of work to do. My basic repair plan is to first disassemble both Odysseys and rebuild the power supplies. After they're rebuilt I'll bring up each of the sections of both synths one at a time and repair issues as they appear. Uh, one of the first things though I have to do before all that is to fix the mechanical problems with the actual keyboards. This is the fastest way to remove the keyboard assembly from your Odyssey. At this point, I've removed the keyboard assembly from the synthesizer and started removing keys to expose the bushings, which are underneath. Each of the keys is connected to a key carrier, which is basically just a metal tube. It's connected via a small wood screw at the back. So all you have to do to remove the keys is undo the wood screw. Be careful that you don't actually crack the keys. It's usually easier to remove the white keys first because they uh, block the black keys in place. So I'll re remove two keys here. Here's the white key. So you just kind of wiggle the key and pull it towards you. There we go. There's the white key. And I'll do the black key. Then you can flip the keyboard assembly up. And this is going to be hard to see on the video, but here's the key carrier. And there's also a little metal stop inside. And also in there is the, uh, the bushing, the keyboard bushing. This came from the White Odyssey, so it's the one that had all the squishy bushings. And in fact, it's quite a big, gooey mess. With the screwdriver, I'm trying to pry the old bushing out. Here we go. Let's see if I can get it out. There we go. Look. Almost. Oh, a little bit more. There we go. So this is what the bushing looks like. It's simply a tiny little rubber grommet. And again, you can't see on the video, but everything is quite uh, gooey and messy. So what I have to do, here's the black key. Blah. There we go. There it is. Uh, because it's such a mess, I'm going to actually have to clean this entire assembly with isopropyl alcohol after I remove all the keys and the bushings, and then 
put the new bushings in place, and then replace all the keys. Another tip is because you've been removed, you have all the keys removed, this is a good time to clean them. You can just put them, all of the keys, you can just put them in uh, a bucket of warm soapy water and let them sit and then rinse them off and they should be as good as new. Here's a close up so that you can see the assembly in more detail. Here's the key carrier, it's a metal tube. There's the stop and that stops the key from either flying too far forward or going too far down. And I'll attempt to pull the bushing out. Here we go. It's a bit of a, you have to kind of finesse it out. There it goes. So here we go. And there we go. That's the plastic bushing. And as you can see, it's all decaying and uh, quite uh, gooey. After you've removed the damaged bushings from the keyboard assembly, you'll want to replace them with brand new bushings. Bushing replacement kits are really easy to find on the internet. Just search for ARP Odyssey keyboard bushings or Pratt Reed keyboard bushings. Pratt Reed was the company that made the original keyboard assembly for the ARP Odyssey. This is a bag of 37 bushings, one for each key on the keyboard. I'll give you a close-up now of me installing one of the bushings on a key. You'll notice that the bushing has a narrow side and a wide side. The wide side should go on the top as if you were facing the keyboard while playing it. The basic idea is to pull the key carrier down halfway and then slip the bushing on as far as you can go and then using a, a screwdriver push it in just far enough so that it fits right underneath the hook on the key carrier. There we go. And you'll notice that the clanking sound has now been replaced with a nice even feel. The next thing you want to look at is the power supply. It's located at the back where the line cord comes in and it's comprised of three main sections. The first section is the transformer and it takes the relatively high voltage at the wall socket and lowers it to a value that's useful for the synthesizer circuits. The second section is comprised of four rectifier diodes and a pair of filter capacitors. This converts the AC voltage to DC and filters out any of the ripple. The third section is a voltage regulator. It supplies a constant DC voltage at a particular value. For this synthesizer, it's plus and minus 15 volts. One thing you want to look at specifically are the filter capacitors. They only have a useful lifespan of about 20 to 25 years, and even ARP Odysseys made in the early 1980s are that old, so you want to replace them. Will it remix? I'll push the splice button. Another thing to look at is for burnt or heat damaged components. The power supply can get quite hot during the normal operation of the synth and over the years some components due to heat stress can fail. If you replace any of the components in the power supply you should adjust the voltage regulator, there are two trim pots here, so that the output of the power supply is plus and minus 15 volts DC. After you're sure that the power supply is outputting the right voltages, you can put the synth together and then put it through its paces and try it out to see which other components or sections of the synthesizer are having issues or have failed components. One of the most common issues with the ARP Odyssey is dust and dirt accumulating in the faders or sliders. This can cause notes to become unstable and the sound to sound scratchy or whole sections of the synthesizer simply not working. There are four different ways to solve that problem and I'll cover them from the least effective but simplest to the most effective but the most difficult to do. The easiest thing to do is simply use some uh, compressed air in a can and spray it right into the faders. You can do this without taking the circuit boards out of the synth. Just literally spray it and uh, hopefully that will dislodge any dirt that's accumulated. The second way to do it is to use contact cleaner instead of just compressed air. 
Uh, be very careful though because it's very easy to overdo it with a contact cleaner and avoid any contact cleaner that says that it includes a lubricant because what that'll do is it'll make it feel great right after you clean it but the lubricant will then attract more dust and debris so a few weeks later you'll be right back to where you started. The third way is to first remove the circuit boards from the synth and then unsolder each of the faders disassemble them and then clean them. Here I'll give you a close-up of what the fader looks like. This is what the fader looks like after it's been removed from the circuit board and this is what it looks like after it's been opened. It's comprised of two plastic halves each with a conductive strip and you can see how much dirt is in there. The two halves are put together with uh, metal side clips. Be careful when you're removing the side clips because the body of the fader can crack easily. And sandwiched in between everything is a sliding contact. The most permanent solution to the problem is to unsolder the old faders and replace them with new ARP faders. Uh, they're really hard to find though, but you can still you know, search around on the internet. There's still some people that are selling them from old stock. After the mechanical repairs were done on both Odysseys, there were still some issues to work out. On this particular Odyssey, there was a problem with one of the oscillators and the portamento circuit was a bit flaky as well. Unfortunately, it's not easy to describe how to repair these types of issues. It all comes down to electronics know-how and experience. However, the service manual can be of great help to learn about how the synth works. The Odyssey manual has circuit descriptions, signal flow diagrams, schematics, it's really useful if you want to maintain your own synth. I hope you've been able to get some useful information about repairing the Odyssey from this video. To wrap things up, I'll give you a short demo of the capabilities of the synth.